get ready for burst of colour. In today's video, I'm using the brightest colours in my palette. Hi there, I'm Janine, I'm an artist and I share my creative journey on this channel. I've been working on a series of paintings which already have a few layers on them. There are still a lot of layers to come though, so in the first few layers I want to add a lot of bright colour that then will be layered on top of with more muted tones and then the bright colours will shine through as little glimpses. Also, please excuse the audio in this video, I had some microphone problems. I already have some of this yellow here that's quite bright um, but I do want to add some more of the primary colours that I selected to build my colour palette from. The primaries I chose were magenta, ultramarine, actually I'm lying it wasn't the ultramarine that I selected it was the phthalo blue and this yellow oxide so I just want to add some more of these bright colours for now. I also want to now start using some bigger brushes. So I've got this one, which is 100 millimeters. It just fits in my water pot. I really like the warm tones of this. So I'm wondering if I should even add some blue. I think I'll start with the magenta. When you put on the wet paint, it looks really bright, but then once it dries, it kind of gets a little bit more transparent and won't look as bright as it does now. With bigger brushes, you notice that you need a lot more paint. And it also goes in with some of the yellow, which will kind of make it a bit orange, because I saw that the pink on the brush. If I mix it. Now that I've already built up quite a few layers, I can start scratching into the wet paint and reveal some of the layers underneath. I will add a little bit of the blue, but I'll use a smaller brush. Maybe this one. I haven't used this a lot. It's a very bristly kind of hog brush. Maybe I'll even use a little bit of the yellow in with the blue to make it slightly more green. It looks ridiculously bright at the moment. I will tone it down later. It's enough to make you lose your sense. Doing a bit of dry brushing here, but I haven't got much paint on my brush. It also adds kind of a thin, transparent layer. You can do that quite well with these um, hog bristles. A little bit of pure blue. Here I do have quite a lot more cooler tones, so add a little bit of the blue here, again with this hog brush I think, I'm going to start small. I do really like this one already, so I'm already a bit scared to mess it up, but I can always paint back over it. I did take a picture before I just started. So I will know what it looked like before and can just paint over it again. This blue that I've currently got on here, the light blue, is leftover paint from a previous series and that has ultramarine in it, which is a warm blue and this phthalo blue is now cool blue. So I want to kind of change that blue anyway to make it more harmonious with my colours. I do have some uh, pastel on here that I did spray with fixative, but it, um, it's not completely fixed, so it will re-wet and 
mix in a little bit with what I'm painting on top. Need to be a bit brighter here. I will add some pink again. Actually, let's start with the yellow and then go in with pink. I do want to spread this out a little bit. So I'm using a little bit of water. It's very scary to do that. So I'm painting over something I did really like. Hopefully it's going to make it even better in the end. Here, uh, I, act, I am actually loving what's happening here now, even more than what was there before. I'll leave a little bit of that. So I'll add some more up here. Now I'm going to go in with cloth and then rub away some of what I've just added. So give me your walls to break. There's nothing else I do than take all my love and lay it on you. Add some of the pink in. I still have yellow on my brush, so it'll probably be a bit more orange. Oh, now, now, oh, now, I've got you. And then I'm going to scratch in with my silicon blade again. I'm still trying to get quite a lot of marks and texture in these earlier layers. Now I have disrupted it a lot more so next time I go back to it I will have to work on it and it'll be easier than if I already really like what's there. So now that it's not quite as pretty, it'll be easier for me to stay a bit more playful. Here again, I have quite a lot of really lovely marks. I don't really want to destroy, but I do want to add some color. So I might go in with a little bit more of a glaze. So a transparent layer. I'll take some of this yellow but I'll thin it down with some water. Oh, got some white in there. I'll add to it. Yeah you see here some of the pasta that I had underneath it wasn't quite fixed so it's moving around now. That's fine. Just kind of keeping the same lowers the marks that are there like this is all quite horizontal down here and so i do want to keep these more on the warmer side and not add too much of the blue but as i said if I do add the blue, it'll probably just disappear in the next layers. It just adds a lot of vibrancy. And this blue already has the tile of blue. That's not the one I had from leftover from another series. But I will add a little bit of tile of blue. Just pure darker. Maybe mix it in a little bit with the other colours. The start of the red is not too many. Maybe 
maybe down a few more as well. But there isn't much colour yet. And I'll add some water for a thin glaze down here. That's definitely added some colour. It looks pretty crazy, but I am loving it. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Here maybe, this is already a little bit darker. I might make this a, a more blue painting, just because the others are all quite warm. Just as a test, see if I like it. I can always go over it, you know? So I use a big brush this time for the blue. I really love the texture down here, so I might keep that as it is for now. We go over this middle area. Again, where it's already quite dark, I'll just make the ducks more blue. We also go over these. Makes these a bit more intense. Some water. Might make all of this blue. When I say all of it, I am leaving bits shining through from underneath. I do need some blue down here, even if I like the textures. I think I'll cover that up as well. Just to make it like these. This is fairly transparent, so most of what I'm covering up now will actually reappear once it's dry. And um, some diluted loof down here, just adjust the colour slightly with the water again. This one's not pure blue, this one's got a few other colours mixed in it. I mm, very much like what's happening here actually. Also see if I can <clears throat> scrape away some of it. I like how it's dragged the blue on top of the where it wasn't blue before. Take off little sailor boy and set for the sea. I do want to add some other colour, maybe just little bits of the pink and also the yellow. This is a softer, smaller brush like this. The yellow is quite diluted actually. When I say yellow, I mean the yellow oxide, which is the yellow I've chosen for this series. And again, this is going to dry kind of transparent. So you will see through what. transparent glaze over here. I need a bigger brush for that though. So I wanted to make it smoother. Why is that brush I always use for? It's got white in it. On adventures to share when you're home. There's a world you can find when you think you're alone. When you're lost in your mind, any shape, any kind for the next one. And then, as promised, I'll add a little bit of pink. Music, boy, 
It's getting a little bit too horizontal and too considered at this stage or for this stage, so I do want to disrupt it a little bit. That's unexpected marks and uncontrolled marks. Now these were the four large ones and then I've got some medium sized panels. Uh, they're 50 by 50, these here. And I have already added uh, quite a bit of bright colours onto most of those, but I'll just see if I want to add a little bit more at this stage. This one, it could do with some brighter colours on here and then I'll also maybe add just a little bit on the others while I'm at it. Enough to make you lose your mind There's magic in the way he moves Always steady, ever wild And on this heartbreak he holds close This already has a lot of blue, but because it dries transparent. It looked very like solid areas when I painted it. Now it's kind of messy, but we can fix that later. At the moment I'm just about adding colour, so let's add some pink on this one as well. I'm making a trolley over here. <laughs> oh no, I've added the blue again. I'm just going to need a different brush now. Oh, now it's the waking just I'm sort of just glazing over the colours that I put there originally that aren't really part of my current colour palette. Right, it's move on to the magenta. I really like all the textures that are happening, but I'm not quite sure where to put it and <clears throat> I don't want to think about it too much, so I'm just going to randomly go over it, which usually is the best way to go forward when you don't know what to do and you're not in your final layers necessarily. And I've done here a lot of bit of the yellow. The yellow that I've got on here from the paint pen, I'll show you. This one from Liquitex paint marker in its colour cadmium yellow medium hue. It is actually quite acidic. It looks a bit like a lemon yellow. So I'm going to just change that while I've got the yellow here. It was just to get some initial marks down. I think this is already the right yellow paint. Now it's some more line work, so I'm doing because I feel like it. And I have it on my mood board and I did want to include some more line work, so I might as well do some of that now and practice playing with it. Very much like the quality of a line that you get when you're blind drawing. This is kind of what I'm trying to get in an abstract way. I might do some of that over here. I think that could be with some of this yellow. So give me your walls to break. There's nothing else I do and take all my love. Maybe up here. I think it, there I'll do it with the blue. I'll try some magenta on this one, mixed in with the yellow that I've still got on my brush. I like kind of twisting the brush, which again takes some control out of what I'm doing. It just lets other materials do their thing.
Now up here I will add some blue squiggles. Well, the water's pulled down here. Let's see if I can create something with that. It's very, it's a lot going on, so I'm covering some of that up to dull it down a little bit because this will dry transparently. Okay, now that they're all a big old mess, I'm going to leave them and get back to them with fresh eyes and start layering more muted colors. I'm not usually for bright colors but I actually love what's happening here and it's making me reconsider if I want to keep a bit more of the colors than usually. I'm still early on in the process though so I might decide to not pack the color a lot more in the future. At this point in time I'm just letting the color brighten up my studio. Let me know in the comments if you are more of a bright or muted color person in general and if that also reflects in the art you make or choose to hang on your walls. If you want to watch me work with colour on paper paintings, you can watch my video up here. Thanks and bye bye.